want you, if you have your Bible, take it and open it to Job, the 22nd chapter. And if you don't have a King James Bible, they're going to butcher this passage so you can just listen. In fact, even for me, I have a New Living Translation to um, preach out of. But the King James, I won't, I won't get into how you can tell they've messed the translation up, but the King James renders this passage different, different than all the other translations. For example, you're going to hear when I read it, it says, if you return unto the Almighty, then you will lay up gold like it's dust. Well, all the other translations say, return to, all the, uh, return to the Almighty and discard your gold as if it were dust. Well, Job at that point is broke. Everything he's had has been burnt by fire, so he has nothing left to get rid of. So, you, you know, translators after the King James Bible often put their own prejudices into the Bible. And when you read this part in the, in the King, anything but the King James, there's just asterisk after asterisk after asterisk with the actual translation at the bottom. I'll give you an example. Even in the King James, then they put their biases in it where it says uh, Paul recognizes two of his co-laborers in the gospel. And it's uh, uh, Julius, my coworker in the gospel, Julius. Well, if you look, there's an asterisk, and at the bottom it says Julia. It was a woman, and they deliberately changed the name to Julius because co-labor meant co-apostle. So people say that women can't preach. Paul recognized a woman apostle, so they changed it. So you got to be careful. I'm not saying you can't trust your Bible. Gener you know, you can trust it, but then when you just be wary of the asterisk. When you see asterisks everywhere. <laughs> That's a problem. So I'm going to read this out of the King James. We've titled, what, what's today? What Friday? Breakthrough. Breakthrough Friday. And so I wanted to, to preach in this morning service on uh, how, how to live a life of breakthrough. That really breakthrough is an anointing that you, you then begin to go from victory to victory. You give the testimony that David gave. David didn't say sometimes God delivered me out of the paw of the bear, and sometimes God delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and hopefully he'll deliver me out of, out of this uh, Philistine's hands. He said, the God who always delivered me out of the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver this Philistine into my hand. And so your Christian life is not meant to be ups and downs. The Bible says, from glory to glory, victory to victory, and strength to strength. Amen. Can I have a better amen? amen. The Bible says he causes all things to work together for your good. The Bible does not teach victory followed by defeat, two steps forward, one step backwards. And so if you don't get your faith correct and rooted in the word of God, then that's gonna open the door for ups and downs. So basically, what I'd like to see happen today is not only God's word illuminate your spirit where you expect victory. Now think of this. The Bible says in the book of Joshua that they had just beat a huge city. It would be like if we led our troops out and sacked Dallas, took the whole city out. And then we went to fight Mansfield, and Mansfield cleaned our clocks. Well, Joshua had just won a huge victory against a, a huge group of people. And then they fought this little town called Ai. Ai didn't even have a long name. And they destroyed them. So what was Joshua's reaction? Well, can't win them all. No. He got down on his face before God and said, what is the problem? Because he knew. What God had told him in Joshua chapter 1, in fact, before we read Job 22, this would be a good scripture to get in your spirit. I believe I read it once before this week. Joshua chapter 1. Look at what God told. His servant Joshua. Joshua 1, 3. I promise you what I promised Moses. And notice, before we even read on in this, there's a pastor that pastors in Arlington, Texas. His name's Dr. Gene Lingerfeld. And I heard him say on one of his products, he said, it's not like God just made a private deal with Joshua and said, listen, I'm gonna make these promises to you, but don't tell anybody I told you this. It's written in the Bible for perpetuity so that anybody can crack this open and see the deal that God made with Joshua and claim it. Can you say amen? amen. Joshua 1.3, I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land that I've given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, 
No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. That's a, that's a promise for the child of God. Not that no one will ever attempt to stand against you. They tried to revoke our permit for Philadelphia. They tried to get our crusade shut down in Camden. It's not that enemies don't ever rise up. Say this out loud. It's normal to be challenged. Say this. It's unscriptural to be defeated. Say it again. It's normal to be challenged. It's unscriptural to be defeated. Therefore, the last defeat you ever suffered before today will be the last defeat you ever suffer in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the Bible way. Glory to glory. Victory to victory. Strength to strength. Glory to glory. Victory to victory. Strength to strength. So you have to have upward trajectory as your goal. It can't be, I hope this works out. It can't be, oh no, now what are we going to do? You can outthink every one of your opponents. You can outpower any of your opponents. You have several ways to defeat them. I, I, I don't know if I've shared this here or not. Uh, when I was flying down here, I think was when I found out our permit was revoked for Philadelphia last year. I was in the St. Louis airport, and I got a phone call um, from either, it was either Magalis or Tony, our crusade director, that they, you know, they told us we'd have our permit for Philadelphia in five days. Uh, that they were mailing it on Monday. Well, we wait two weeks and didn't get it, so we call, make sure they have the right address. Oh, um, well, actually, what happened was, uh, well, the higher-up guy found out about it, and they've revoked your permit. So when they find out, you know, I got the thing scheduled with three, I got people flying up from here to help. So what am I going to do? You know, in the natural, hey, we'll call everybody and let them know that, uh, that, that there's not going to be a crusade. You know, actually, I, I thought, well, my original plan anyway, if you hear the story, was to set up the speakers and preach till somebody takes me to prison. So I just felt like, well, it's back to plan A. The permit was a nicety anyway. So I thought, I, I, you have to commit to going forward. You know, it, 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 when you see the Red Sea and you think, you know what, probably should just go back to eat, you're never going to part the Red Sea. You have to make up your mind, today will be the poorest I ever am, today will be the sickest I ever am, I'm going forward in my covenant with God. So anyway, but when, I, when that news hit me, you know, not now it wouldn't bother me. But this was the first time I had ever dealt with something like this. So I didn't know what to do. In my flesh, I, I felt discouraged. I thought, man, it's just angry. And it was funny how the Lord spoke to me. I felt very clearly in my spirit. The mafia was always able to outthink the government. And I felt the Lord speak, you know, Al Capone had syphilis that affected his brain. He ended up dying in a, in a state of dementia. I felt the Lord speak to me. If carnal mobsters drinking all the time, doing cocaine, if they could outthink the government, do you think that you can't outthink them with your anointed mind? And that made me happy. I started thinking about that head of permits with his pleated khaki pants and his name tag and wrinkled shirt. I, I can outthink that guy. Can you say, my enemy's not big. That's what David saw with Goliath. Everybody, oh, he's so big. David was thinking, look at the size of that guy's forehead. I can hit a milk bottle with my slingshot at 100 yards. That guy's got a pimple the size of a Toyota Prius. Amen. <laughs> so you have to start valuing who you are in redemption and devaluing who your enemies are. I can, I can find a way out. And then when you start moving forward, God will start sending you helpers. Can you say amen? <laughs> Some of you are used to, to discouragers coming. God will send people to help you. So I, I started covering all my bases, you know. We didn't end up having to use it. But my brother-in-law, my wife's twin sister's husband, he was remodeling a home. He's a construction worker. He was remodeling a home for a guy that's a lawyer. He brought him to my meeting last January, and the guy got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. So I told Abel, as soon as, soon as that challenge came, I said, Abel, call that lawyer and tell me, Tell him what I, what I should do from a legal standpoint. What, what's my best course of action? Abel Mogalis calls me back half in tears. She said, you're never going to believe this. Not only is he a lawyer. She said, when the people, the, the whole thing behind cities giving permits out is to limit their liability. For example, if you're going to have like a state fair, things have to meet certain requirements so that the ride doesn't collapse and kill people and people sue the city. So she said, actually, above the head of permits, there's a lawyer they report to that specializes in limiting a liability for the cities. That's the type of lawyer that Abel's working for, and he's actually head over this whole region. And he said, she said there's only, he said there's only just a few 
lawyers like that that are over the permits. They're like, and he said, he's in that assembly. He said, from now on, anytime somebody gives you a problem with a permit, call him. He'll make one phone call, and it'll never take more than one hour to get it resolved. Can you say amen? So you can see from that, God didn't have to flush somebody out. The, he the helpers were already prepared. Lift your hands all over this place. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ that God already has people that you don't know about that are positioned to help you. Just like David went off by himself on the run from Saul. But then all these men, four, 200, 400, 600 men, started to gather to him to do anything that the guy wanted to help him accomplish his destiny. Helpers from this day forward will run to your aid to see to it that you make your promised land. If you believe it, take 10 good seconds and lift up a mighty praise unto God. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I, I, I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you'll be on land that I've given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. No one will be able to successfully stand against you. He didn't say they can't try, but they, so anytime an enemy identifies himself, as long as I'm on this board, you're never gonna get the, okay, then we know he'll be the first one to die, amen. God will wipe them out. Let God arise and his enemies scatter. And scatter can read splatter if you read the Old Testament. Let God arise and your enemies splatter. God takes people out. It, the Bible says, I will bless those who help you. That's what he's saying to Abraham. If somebody helps you, I'll bless them. That carries over to the New Testament. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. That means you don't see that this is, oh, Jonathan, I like him preaching. Boy, he gets excited. You see that it's somebody that God put his hand on to bless America. When you say, I'm gonna do what I can to help him, God said, I'll bless you and I'll bless those that bless you. But then there'll also be those that curse you. Jericho, you're not coming through our place. Go, no, we won't let you through. They didn't wanna conquer Jericho. They just wanted to go through. And kings would say, you're not coming through our land. God would say, okay. Not only are they gonna go through, there won't be anything left of your land. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. That's the promise of God. And you need to have that in your faith because with all this stuff, with ISIS, terror, fear, if you only think God has one side, love, he's not Cupid. He's not flying around with hearts for eyes. He's the, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And the Bible says in Proverbs 30, 30, the lion is the strongest of beasts and turneth away from no one. You have, what, so where is Christ? We know he's seated in, on the right hand of his father, but by the mystery of redemption, where else is he? What's the best way to defend a lion? If you had a pet lion and somebody was trying to attack it and you had it in a cage, what would be the best thing you could do? Try to fight the guy off or just unlock the cage? And that's what prayer in the Holy Ghost does. That's what the anointing does. It lets the lion out of the cage. I prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. The lion in you will begin to rise up in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever victories you've won these last nine days, wherever God has brought you out of, God's not going to leave you just brought out of sin. Being here has built me up, like, so much. I mean, I've been abused. I've done things I'm ashamed of, you know. But that's all behind me, and I'm moving forward. And I mean, I feel like a whole new person now. God has a glorious future, a wonderful plan available for you. And tonight, God's going to show you what it is and empower you to lay hold of it. When I went out to the Spirit, I just started wanting more and more and more. I, I feel better than I did when I came. I've gave my heart to the Lord before, um, and tonight it was just a refreshing in my spirit. I went up with a friend of mine, and the Holy Spirit was flowing so heavily that it just knocked me on my, off my feet again. Every person on this hillside, God wants to lay his hand on you tonight to do 
great and mighty things to give him glory that the world will see. When people put their hand in the hand of Jesus, nothing is ever the same. Christianity, you know, you read from the Bible that we're spiritual Israel. You know, that, that like I took time with yesterday, Galatians 3. Those who put their faith in Christ Jesus share the same blessing Abraham. They are the true seed of Abraham. But if you want to look at it specifically, how were we grafted in to become spiritual Israel? We're the tribe. Well, Jesus is our brother. Jesus is the one that connected us in. And Jesus comes from what tribe? Judah. So we're actually up, and the Bible says the scepter will never depart out of the hand of Judah. What does that mean? That means that tribe Judah is ordained. The scepter is what you take to reign. The scepter is what the king holds to give you dominion on this earth. We are brothers with Jesus Christ. He's our elder brother. He's in authority, but we are of the tribe of Judah, and the word of God declares the scepter will never depart from the hand of, uh, from the hand of Judah. So somebody can have a laminated name tag that says head of parks, Philadelphia, but I have an invisible scepter in my hand that says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all the inhabitants that dwell therein. I prophesy today everywhere your foot shall tread from this day forward God has given you the land in Jesus name. No one will be able to stand against you. Lift your hands again. Every invisible thing Every sickness and disease, every spirit of fear, any invisible thing that's trying to stand against you on the authority of the Word of God, Father, you declared it'll never be able to stand against them. Everything that's standing against your children in the invisible realm, every disease, every weakness, it is declared cut down today in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep your hands lifted. And every visible thing, anybody that's made it their business, to shut your business down, to lead your children astray, every physical enemy. Father, today, arise and let them scatter. Just like you said, the Egyptians that you see today, you will never see them again. Let people just go missing. Transfer them out in the name of Jesus Christ. Clear a path for people to walk without resistance to their victory in the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, keep your hands lifted and just begin to thank God out of your mouth that he's clearing a way, that he'll make a way where there is no way, that you hold a scepter in your hand. The scepter will never depart out of the hand of Judah. Say this out loud. Thank you, Father. The last defeat I saw will be the last one I ever see. No more defeats, just victories in Jesus' name. Lift your hands again and just begin to thank him out of your mouth. Thank you for victory. Thank you that you didn't promise us victory. Thank you that you promised us victory after victory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for dark clouds rolling back. Thank you for stormy seas becoming still as glass. Thank you, Father, that everything that was of turbulence, just fighting to, to gain ground, no, you're going to make an easy path for us. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you believe it, shout, I receive it. No one will ever be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I'll never fail you. I'll never abandon you. Be strong and courageous. For you are the one. Everybody say be strong. Be strong. Say be courageous. be courageous. God didn't say I'll make you strong and courageous. He said I didn't feel any anointing whatsoever. When I told that guy in Camden, New Jersey, if you try to touch my stage, try to see what happens. I'll preach on that stage tonight at 7 o'clock and you can't do anything about it. I actually hung up the phone and went, now what do I do? I've, I've stirred up a hornet's nest. But I understand there's a certain posture that the power of God works behind, that God expects you. Jesus was not standing with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they mouthed off to King Nebuchadnezzar and said, oh, king, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. That, that's total disrespect. We're not careful to answer you. Just let us state clearly. 
He was giving them a second chance. I'll give you one more chance to bow. Oh, king, we're not careful to answer you in this matter. Our God's able to deliver us out of the fire. But for the record, even if he doesn't, I'd never bow to your stupid God. And the king's face became distorted with rage. And he ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter. They had to be bold and courageous first. And your boldness and courage becomes like a magnet for angels and even for the person of Jesus Christ, the captain of the Lord's host. God is repelled by sissies. People that, are, that walk around like the third guy on the left on the evolution chart in church, that's why they always need prayer. Pastor, can you pray for me? I need prayer. You don't need prayer. You need to put your shoulders up and pick your chin up or it won't work. I, told, I don't remember, I mean, like I told you, I haven't been home since I came here to preach last time and wasn't home for a while before that, so I can't remember what I said where. There was one lady that came for prayer. I said, I'm not praying until you smile or it won't work. You can't get touched by God like this. Ah. He's alive. He's not dead. We're not holding God's funeral. We are marching in his triumphal procession that he is king of kings and lord of lords. When you, let me tell you, when you're challenged in life, you don't feel like standing up. You don't feel like being bold. That's why the Bible says, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. There's no enemy that you'll face that carries a spirit that's able to stop you. They carry a spirit of heaviness. When word got back to me, we can't have the permit. That wasn't spiritual power to stop me. That was an attempt to get me to quit smiling, slump my shoulders, put a Facebook status up, please keep me in prayer. You know, we just received some bad news, may have to reschedule. It's a spirit of heaviness to fight against boldness and courage. That's why when you recognize that, anything the devil wants you to do once, you do the opposite twice. Put up, you're trying to get me sad? Not only will I not be sad, I'll put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up my voice unto God. Raise holy hands up without wrath or doubting and bust you in the head and keep my victory in Jesus' name. Come on, if that sounds like you, Take 30 good seconds and do it now. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. The scepter will not depart out of the hand of Judah. What tribe is Judah? Judah was the tribe of what? Praise. Very good. So this will let you know the secret to ruling with that scepter. God, God said, rule now in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. I will be alive and preaching the gospel long after that Philadelphia man is dead and buried. You can mark that down. I don't care if he's 15 years younger than me. I know how these things play out. Hallelujah. Rule now in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. That's what that scepter does. People all talking about their enemies. We were called the pastor, it's very hard. Shut up, shut up! God didn't call somebody to a town to magnify the devil. So then quit, just quit. You'd be shocked. People used to write me on Facebook, hey, I'm having trouble getting money to go down to Bible school. Will you pray for me? I used to write, encourage them. I just right now, quit. Save yourself the time. You're already complaining. You haven't even freaking started Bible training yet. Just save yourself 15 years of, uh, uh, and quit. Now you can see why I don't pastor. <laughs> pastor, I don't feel like coming to church anymore. Good, beat it. How are you going to encourage other people? When you can't even win the victory over your own discouragement, you got to keep the Holy Ghost stirred up on the inside of you and make up your mind. Not only am I going to win my own battles, there will be an overflow of the joy of the Lord that lifts people up. Until you break, you can hear me preach for nine weeks twice a day. Until you break the mentality of mountains and valleys. And how many of you know sometimes it's hard how come, you know, how many of you know sometimes life throws us a curveball? 
Whose life? Where in the Bible is there this third spiritual entity called life? There's God, there's the devil, then there's life, who God doesn't have any control over. He can just do what he wants. You can claim the scriptures, you can tithe, you can do everything, but there's this other higher power, even higher than God, called life. How many of you know life has a funny way of throwing you a curveball? How many of you know when you've done everything you can, partner with God, there, there's still life, and even God can not help you with him. Let me tell you something, if life throws you a curveball, you can knee life in the groin. If life gives you lemons, you can rub the lemons in life's eyes and take what the Bible says is yours. Stop having a struggler's mentality. Start understanding that you carry the scepter of Judah. Rule are the enemies? Yes, but you've been given dominion to rule now in the midst of your enemies. Thanks for watching Revival today. If you had emptiness inside of your heart and you felt it start to leave your body as you heard that word of truth from the word of God, that was the Holy Spirit. It's like a healing balm. And there's so much more of that where that came from. If you've never experienced that before and you would like to accept Jesus as your savior, I'd like to pray with you. Repeat after me. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I confess with my mouth that you are are the Son of God. I believe in my heart that you rose from the dead and I know that you are alive today. Jesus, thank you for washing away my past and for making me new and whole. I love you, Jesus, and I want a new life in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the family of God. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ and it really is that simple. Now all you have to do is just immerse yourself in the Word of God. Start by, of course, reading your Bible, but also make sure that you're surrounded by lots of other ways, a lot of worship music, a lot of positive influence. Did you know Revival Today Radio is an actual radio app? You can download it in the App Store and listen to it 24 hours a day. You can also connect with us on the social media platforms that are listed right on your screen. And even more, we would like to connect with you personally. Go to our website, revivaltoday.com, and click on the link that says, I just got saved. In fact, we wanna send you a very special gift, completely free at absolutely no cost to you. We will not ever share your information with anyone, and we will send you something that will help you to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. Thank you so much for watching Revival today. And remember that God loves you, and we love you.